This is Dave from Chorley. He's 32 and he has autism. Dave lived independently with his best friend Paul in a placement. But sadly, one day Paul passed away and this made Dave feel sad. Because of his autism, he has difficulty expressing and communicating his feelings and he needs structure in his life. His parents felt that Dave would best benefit from bereavement counselling and tried to get this in place for him. But they were told that whilst Dave was sad, he was not sad enough to get this help. And so they paid privately for counselling, at a cost of around £200. Dave struggled to cope with his grief and adjust to this massive change in his life. He became increasingly distressed and this played out in his behaviour. He ended up getting evicted from his home by his housing provider because his house had become a mess which breached his tenancy. He presented at A&E where his behaviour was very challenging. He was admitted to mental health services and progressively got worse. He ended up in psychiatric care for six months and had no home to be discharged to. Dave's mental health services were not fully tuned in to his learning disability. He wasn't able to go back to his previous accommodation and there didn't seem to be any other suitable alternatives. This was all very stressful for his mum and dad, especially his dad, who ended up having two heart attacks. Senior people from the trust offered as much support as possible, but Dave was still stuck in a system bound by the rules and processes of separate organisations. Organisations who were not in the habit of sharing objectives and information, and none of which who would take ownership of his case and help him to address his various needs. Things could have been very different for Dave. If he had been given the help that he needed earlier on, it is possible that bereavement counselling could have helped him to manage his emotions and adjust to living alone. It is possible that losing his home contributed to his mental breakdown. It is possible that without the stress, his dad would have stayed well. And it is possible that had there been a place for Dave to go, he would have not been stuck in psychiatric intensive care for six months at a cost of £130,000. The financial cost of this was staggering and more importantly, the human cost was massive. We need to think about where it went wrong for Dave and make some changes. Alongside partners, we need to be more flexible and ensure we are meeting the needs of people rather than just being driven by criteria. So Dave was sad, but not sad enough to get the help that he needed. His house had become messy, but not messy enough to get him some help to address it. His mental health wasn't great, but not bad enough to get him the support available to someone with a severe and enduring mental health problem. And because he had Asperger's syndrome, he was perceived as difficult rather than being recognised as vulnerable. And this excluded him from help. His parents were supportive and wanted the best for him, but didn't know where to go. And there wasn't one person responsible for supporting Dave and helping him and his parents navigate the system. It is possible for us to do things differently, to provide a better experience for the Daves of the world. If we pay attention to a person's home environment and how they are living, we may pick up on signs that they are not coping and get them help sooner rather than later. We need to consider lowering the thresholds to intervene and support people, recognise triggers earlier on and work across agencies to support them. This means a better outcome for them and less impact on the resources of public services. If we shift our focus from fixing to working with partners and breaking down barriers to keep people healthy, happy and well in the first place, if we work with partners to stop being so process driven but instead more human and flexible to individual needs, and if we stop thinking about how we have traditionally done things and think about what our communities need now and in the future, we will deliver better health outcomes for local people. If one person is assigned to support someone and take ownership of the problem, getting the help they need as soon as possible, preventing a spiral into crisis, we will create employment opportunities, communities will thrive and the public sector will release financial benefits. Dave no longer lives in Chorley. He's now living in a specialist placement in Blackburn. Because of what he has been through, Dave could not recover to the level of independence that he had before. His life has changed as a result of actions that were avoidable. Sadly, we can't go back and undo this for Dave, but we do have an opportunity to work alongside partners and change things for the better in the future by developing new models of care and support for people that focus on community well-being.